Mother's Day to all of you, and we pray that you are blessed as a mother today. And uh, I, I want to talk to you today um, a little bit about, um, I guess, a little bit about mothers maybe, um, but we're going to do our third core value. We've been talking about core values here at Life Church, and, and there's a difference between a core value and a high value. A high value is something like air conditioning in a car. Now, I am going to spend a lot of extra money to make sure in West Texas I've got air conditioning in my car. How about you? I'm not going to die for it. That's not something I'm going to be willing to lay my life down for is air conditioning. But a core value are those, those deep values within your heart that, that when push came to shove, you would be willing to die for. These are the things that are um, of utmost importance in your life. And so we as a church are defining our core values. And I hope in the process of us sharing with you our core values as a church, that you also begin to define your core values. What are the things that you stand upon? What are the character traits that you stand upon as, as a, a person of character? And we started our core values with the first one, to be a life-giving church. And if you haven't heard any of these messages, I encourage you to get online, go to golifechurch.com, listen to our podcast. Um, all of these are so important um, as, as we roll these out to, a, to the church. Our second core value is to be a spirit-led church. Wasn't Sunday's service last week just incredible? It was such a, a beautiful presence of the Holy Spirit. And let me encourage you, we had our um, encounter service Sunday night. And if you thought Sunday morning was good, Sunday night was even that much more incredible. The presence of the Lord just, just uh, flowed in such a beautiful way. Um, and, and so next time we have an encounter service, come out. You're going to be blessed with that. But today I want to do core value number three. And that's the title of this message today. And that is to create a culture of honor. To create a culture of honor. Today, what are we doing? We're honoring our mothers uh, for the, the work that they do. And so we as a church want to develop a character of honor in our church and, and not just uh, being one-sided, but I want to unpack this today on what it looks like to be a person that, that gives honor. Honor in our society is a dying trait. You know, we, we teach in our culture independence, not interdependence. What independence says is me, myself, and I. It's about me. It's about what I need. And oftentimes in our society, we even teach you know, if you pay attention to, to cartoons that are being um, uh, infiltrated into our children, uh, so much of it is about independence. If you, if you look at the average children's show, usually they don't have both parents. Sometimes they don't have any parents around. Um, or if they do, maybe they have one or another, and, and they're taught to be independent. Uh, but the Bible tells us not to be independent. It says that we need to be interdependent. And what that means is your gift fulfills me, my gift fulfills you, and as we join together as believers um, we, and, and honor each other, um, we use each other's gifts to make the body um, better. And so today I want to talk to you about living a life of honor. We are going to create a culture of honor around here. And that culture of honor is going to be so drastically different than the society around us that people are going to be drawn to us. They're going to feel so loved. They're going to be filled so welcome when they come into the doors of Life Church because they're going to feel this, this overwhelming sense of honor. Honor is something that is, earn, is not earned. It is freely given. You know, sometimes we think that to have honor, we've got to earn it. Well, that's not what the Bible says. Maybe that's what the world says, but that's not what the Bible says. Honor is not something that's demanded. Honor is something that's commanded by God. Honor is not based on your personal feelings for a particular person, but it is given because of position appointed by God. So today, we're going to talk about honor. So if you have your notes today, or you're taking notes today, I've got four points to my sermon today. And here's the question, who are we to honor? Who are we to honor? So here's the first point. The first person that we are to honor is God. If we cannot honor God, then how in the world can we honor people around us? We have got to live a life of honor, of worship, of service unto our Savior. In 1 Timothy 1.17, it says, Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Our God deserves honor. 
the creator of all things, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He demands a, a, a place of honor. He commands a place of honor in all of our lives. Now, we, we often, you know, when I say we need to honor God, we go, of course we do. But do we really honor God with our life? I, I know people that are the, the best church-going people on the planet, but does their life really represent that which honors God and brings glory to God? We honor God first by seeking Him. We need to seek God first. Ask yourself, are you, are you seeking God first above every other relationship in your life? Are you seeking a relationship with Jesus Christ more than any other relationship in your life? That is how we honor God, is by seeking Him. We also honor God through our worship to Him. Now, I'm not going to talk about this too much because that's going to be another core value in the next couple weeks. Uh, but we need to live a life of worship. Now, some of us have a misconception of what worship is. We think worship is, is the three songs that you sing right before the offering. That's not worship. That, that is an aspect of worship, and we worship through music. But our life should be worship. Everything that we do should be done as unto worship to our King. Did you know that, that mothers out there, that when you are up in the middle of the night taking care of six, sick kids and you're all tired, you can do that as a no worship to God? When you're at, at, at work and, and you, you're serving uh, your, your employer, that you can do a, as unto worship to God. So God wants us to do everything as unto worship to Him. We also honor God with our speech. You know, it's funny that the ones that are the, the loudest worshipers sometimes on Sunday morning are the most quiet Christians on Monday morning. But do we proclaim and honor God with our lips? Or do we only do it when we're around other Christians? God wants to be honored in everything that we do. And as you give honor to God, you know what? It draws. What does the Bible say? If I be lifted high, I will draw all men unto me. Well, God doesn't lift himself up. We are the ones that lift him up. We are the ones that worship him and put him in a high position. And as we lift him up, he will draw all men unto himself. And so people will just automatically come to you and say, what is the difference about you? What is this peace that I feel about, uh, feel from you? And it's because you're giving honor to God. We also honor God through our actions. Do we obey God? Do we do his commandments? Or are you one of those that that maybe is one way with Christians, another way with someone else. Maybe you're, you're very religious on Sunday, but then throughout the week, no one even knows um, that, that you're a Christian. We need to honor God through, through our actions. We honor God when we obey His commandments. When we read the Word and obey His commandments. You know, some of the commandments of God we don't understand. They don't make sense in our natural mind. But we have to trust that God has our best interests at heart. That when we serve Him and that we trust Him and we obey His commandments, we can trust that He is working on our behalf and He's taking care of us. In Deuteronomy 13 verse 4, it says, You shall follow the Lord your God and fear Him, and you shall keep His commandments. Listen to His voice and serve Him and cling to Him. We are to obey the voice of God. We also honor God not because of what He does for us, but because of who He is, the creator of the universe. You know, sometimes, especially as, as uh, born-again believers, we almost take church lightly. You know, this is just what we do. We come into the house of God. I didn't like that song, or I do like this song, or the sermon really didn't minister to me today, or, or man, that really was powerful today. And we miss, we miss it because it's not about us. It is about God. It's about bringing glory to Him because of who He is. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That Jesus died for us before we even had a chance to give our heart to Him. For that alone, He deserves honor. For creating us. For, for molding us in our mother's womb before we were even a thought in our, our parents' mind. The Lord knew us. And so He is to be worshipped and, and, and honored because of that. So we first honor God. Now here's the second point. Honor is to be given to authority. In Romans 13, 1, it says, Every person is to be, sub to be in subjection to the governing authorities. 
For there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. We are to 